All right. Okay. So you guys uh, hope you enjoyed the Neil's lecture. He pretty much introduced how you know quantum computation works. And like uh, any form of computation, there are many sort of models in which you could sort of implement this. Um, but uh, for quantum for quantum computation, there's like annealing, continuous gate, uh, discrete gate. But uh, I guess most commonly used is a discrete gate. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, discrete gate it pretty much means you're, you're performing quantum computation using uh, quantum circuits. And uh, that's what we're going to be building here with uh, PSKIP. So um, just a quick disclaimer, I'm, I'm a terrible programmer, uh, let alone live programmer. So if I make a few mistakes, you're going to have to bear with me. All right, so uh, I guess, you know, we can begin. So um, let's start by, yeah, what's up? Uh, do you want to give people a few seconds so if they have, they can open up uh, their Kiska textbook and you can walk through them through the installation process as well? Like right now? Yeah. Um, or you can I think Emilio is going to do that. Emilio is going to do that after. So I guess you, you guys can follow along now and then sort of just uh, the recording is going to be put out because, you know, you can't really learn by watching someone code. You're going to have to do it yourself. So um, I guess, you know, we can do that after. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, let's uh, begin. First off, you wanna import Qiskit. The best way of doing that is from Qiskit, import star. And star pretty much means you're importing everything within Qiskit. Um, and import, you know, NumPy is generally useful to have in your environment. So let's say we have this quantum circuit. It's a pretty basic one. So what this line represents is a qubit. And this represents, a, so pretty much a state and this, uh, um, sort of block over here represents an operation on that state. Uh, it's what's called the quantum logic gate, but it's essentially just a matrix that uh, operates on um, this qubit. So this is initialized at zero, meaning um, the state of the qubit is, in, is initially one zero. And by applying this Hadamard, you will, I'll show you what happens in a second. You probably know through Mihil's lecture, but I'll show you. Um, so pretty much the way you'd write this in Qiskit is uh, you start out by defining some circuit let's call it circ one and it's called quantum circuit. So what this one one means is we want one qubit and one classical bit to store uh, results of measurement. And then, you know, if we run, oh, if we run circ one, as you can see, we have an object. It's a, it's a quantum circuit. And uh, so let's say you want to apply this gate here, this Hadamard gate. What you do is you do circuit one dot H and uh, zero. So zero essentially means you're operating on the zeroth qubit, um, which is the only qubit in this case. Okay, now, if you wanna draw this qubit, uh, sorry, draw this circuit, you do circ one dot draw. And as you can see, it's pretty similar, but this doesn't really look good. So what you'd wanna do, if you want a picture, a nice graphic, is you put MPL, which stands for matplotlib inside of this draw now function. Okay, so now, uh, Min, can you erase this stuff? Uh, blue thing. Yeah, thanks. Okay, now let's say we have a more complex circuit. In this case, uh, there are two qubits. So let's call it circ2. You define a quantum circuit. And this time, you know, the first time we put 2, 2. Now we want to put, uh, sorry, first time we put 1, 1 because there's one qubit. Now I want to put 2, 2. Um, so similarly to the first time, what you do is you do circ2 dot uh, h. It's a Hadamard gate and you'd apply it on the zeroth qubit. And now for the second qubit, you'd want to apply what's called the Z gate, the Pauli Z matrix essentially. So two dot Z, put that in one. Okay, let's draw it. What? Oh, sorry, circ two. As you can see, it's a uh, same thing. So, um, now that's this five. So, okay. So yesterday's homework, homework assignment was to construct the circuit. It was to find the state vector of the circuit. And this is what's called, as Mihil said, a five plus bell state. It uh, represents entanglement. Um, and essentially, if you want to do it, you just do circ three equals, you know, we have two qubits, nothing new. Quantum circuit, two, two. Um, you apply a Hadamard on the first qubit. And okay, this is slightly trickier because it's a not, not a one qubit gate, but it's rather a two qubit gate, but it's pretty much the same process. What you do is you put C naught or, or CX. And uh, what you want to do is you want to, the first uh, 
part, the first uh, parameter you want to put in is the control bit, and the second is the target. So you're going from qubit zero to qubit one here. And if you want to draw it, you get this is the result, same thing, right? So, okay, now you have a bunch of quantum circuits we designed. I'm pretty sure if I gave you a more complex one, you would be able to figure out how to do that. So I said we have five qubits, you just put quantum circuit, five, five, and then put whatever gates you have. Oh, and by the way, I put this little link here. So pretty much any, this is, has like a summary of most gates, which you, you'll end up using and in, in, uh, using Qiskit. So um, you can just check that out on your free time. So where were we? Okay, yeah. So yeah, you have a bunch of, Let's say you design your own quantum circuit. You, you don't just want its picture. You want to do stuff with it. So the first thing you can do is get the final, the state vector of the qubit upon um, operating those gates on it. And what you do is first off, you import a, uh, a backend, a sort of a, a simulator. So the simulator we're going to be using here is called the state vector simulator. You do that by saying you air. Air is essentially... I think I said this yesterday, but it's like a sub library within uh, uh, within Qiskit that essentially allows you to to simulate stuff locally. So air dot get backend state state vector simulator that gets you the simulator, and then you want the result. What you do is you put this execute function, you put your circuit of choice. We'll run, run through a few examples here, and um, using the backend simulator, this thing, the sim and then through that we want to get the result. Okay, and psi, which is the state vector, would be result dot get state vector. So this is one of those things you want to, you're, you're, like at least me, I just memorize this stuff. I, um, it's, it's just syntax. Do it enough times, you, you'll eventually have it memorized. So, um, you know, just while, do, while implementing this, on, I, I hope you'd be implementing it on your own after this lecture. While trying this kind of thing, just um, try to practice, essentially. So now if we, okay, let's pick a circuit. What do we want here? Okay, let's get the most basic one. Um, circuit one, as you can see, the state vector comes out to be 0 0.7, 07, 0 0.7. And if you square that, you get, oh, you get 0 0.5. So, uh, so essentially like a 50, 50, like Mihil was saying, a coin flip. This is like a quantum coin flip, I guess, uh, applying a had the more than a qubit. So, yeah. And if you want to get, so again, the output is just a NumPy array. So, uh, let's say np.lin alg dot uh, norm of psi, that comes out to be one. And again, regardless of what circuit you're using, I, I you know what, we'll give you $500,000 this time if you find a circuit where, that a real proper a circuit that can work where the norm won't be one. Um, so second thing you can do, you, you got the, essentially the state vector of the circuit of the, yeah. So the second thing you can do is get the unitary of all the gates acting on that uh, qubit. And what you do is similarly to this, you, you get your simulator. This time, instead of the state vector simulator, you're getting the unitary simulator. And you want to get the results. Again, you're executing on whatever circuit you want with uh, this backend, and you're getting the results. And then you, you would essentially be result.get unitary. Okay. Oh, who's drawing? Okay, so let's say, what is you? Okay, which circuit are we doing? Circuit three. So this is a five plus belt state. So remember it's uh, square root of a half, zero, zero, square root of a half. Let's see, oh no, sorry, we're getting the unitary. Uh, okay, so you, you get this unitary. And if you wanna check, remember if you multiply a unitary by the initial state vector, in this case, it's zero, zero, zero. That's called the, the ground state state vector. Uh, oh, NP dot array, let's see if I do that right. It's essentially written like this. One, one followed by two to the n minus one zeros, where n is the number of qubits, right? So yeah, we get the, the, state, the state vector of one. Okay. Now we also spoke, spoke about block spheres. How do we represent those? Um, okay, which, let's change this to circuit two. I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so essentially what you want to do is you want to import uh, from qiskit.tools.visualize Stations, I think it was. Uh, import um, plot. Okay, let's see. There's a couple of things you can do here. There's, oh, it's visualization. Plot. Okay, you have all these different uh, things you can explore. Let's say here, one multi vector. So 
what we do is we essentially just pass this in. It's a function plot, uh, block multi vector, and then you put in your state vector psi. And we should get okay. So as you can see, we're doing circuit two. I think the first we put, we put a Hadamard on the first one and the Z on the second one. So that is what you would expect. Okay, now now okay now let's say we want results. You know what I mean? So here we're representing the properties of, of sort of the, the the quantum state of of a system. But if we want actual results, actual measurements, here's what we do. It's again a from air. We get a simulator. It's called the Chasm Simulator quantum assembly language or something like that, where you actually just simulate the, the probability using pseudo, pseudo, uh, pseudo random numbers, right? So um, you want to get backend is equal to air.get backend, um, chasm simulator, not unitary. Uh, result would be execute circuit. Okay, which one do you want to send? Okay, let's do circuit three. Um, using this backend with uh, 420 shots. Um, and again, shots essentially means how many times you want to measure it, measure it. So if you measure it once, then you're getting either a one or a zero, or, or in this case, a zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, because they're a circuit three has two qubits. Um, but if you do it like, let's say twice, then you get two results. We're getting 420 results here. So um, the output would be result.get counts. And let's say if we want the output here, as you can see, we get zero, zero. So that's not exactly the type of thing we'd expect. It doesn't sort of represent the state vector here. And the reason is because we forgot to measure. You, right, you, you we're not getting anything because we're not, we're not actually measuring the state. So what, what you'd want to do is you circ3 dot, you apply a measurement gate. And here, since we have two qubits, you put a list. Let's say you want to measure, because you can measure, you don't have to measure all qubits. Remember, you could measure some qubits and then keep others in a, in a superposition. So, you want to measure both qubits in this case and store that result in uh, two classical bits. Because again, at the end of the day, you want results, and that's on a, it's on a quantum system. It's on a quantum system. It's, a, it's like an actual tangible one or zero. So, um, yeah. So if we run that, as you can see now, we have those measurement gates that are storing the results here. So now, if we run this, as you can see now, we have around two hundred three times we get. Uh, zero, zero, and 217 times we get one, one. So it's around 50, 50, and those two numbers sum up to 420. So that's pretty much, it. it's just basic probability, right? So let's uh, plot the histogram, histogram. And as you can see, yes, it's kind of like a 50, 50 thing. And again, we don't have zero, one or one, zero because it's essentially an entangled state. Because the way this works is you take the first qubit, put in a superposition. So the first qubit now could either be one or zero. Before it would have been zero every time. Now it's one or zero, 50% of the time. And then you put a C naught here, which the C naught rule, I guess, is essentially if it's a one, make the second one a one. If it's a zero, make it a zero. Because you're applying this X gate, which flips from zero to one. Um, so yeah, we don't have one zero or one one. So, that, so that's essentially what entanglement is. Okay, so full example. Okay, I'm probably gonna screw up here. Let, let, let's see how it goes. Uh, so let's say QC quantum circuit is equal to quantum circuit, I don't know, four, four. Let's apply a uh, Hadamard on the first qubit. Um, let's apply a, a parameter gate. So what a parameter gate, it's like the RX, we spoke about that. So it's essentially, it's a general gate with like, there, it's not numbers, it's not only numbers. There's like a, like some parameter inside which you can define. And uh, here, in this case, it's a, it's a theta value, right? So let's set that to pi over three and put that on qubit, I don't know, one. And then we put some Pauli matrices, say X on one as well, QC dot Y on two. QC dot Z on, on three. And then and maybe we can put a C naught somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, C naught, say from, from zero to two. Okay, now if we wanna QC dot draw, oh, QC dot draw. You see, we, we have this this circuit. And oh, that, let's, we almost forgot, let's measure it.
boom. Okay. Now, if we want to get some results, we just copy paste this. Oh, no need to import. And as you, where, where is it? Oh, 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 let's put QC here. Okay. And as you can see, we have some arbitrary, no, no, well, not arbitrary, so some probabilities according to this circuit, which you can essentially derive from the state vector. So this would essentially would be, um, you know, you could represent it as like a linear combination of basis states. It would be alpha squared, this would be beta squared, uh, gamma squared, and uh, delta squared, right? And by squared, of course, we mean, you know, they're complex numbers, so you multiply by the conjugate. Um, now, if you want to run this on a real quantum computer, you can do that as well, one of IBM's quantum systems. Uh, they essentially use what's called superconducting qubits. Um, we might get someone from IBM to speak about that to you guys uh, in a few days, to really keep you posted. Uh, and essentially, same process, you just wanna build your circuit. Again, we're building a five plus, similar to this one. Um, two, two qubits, we prepare a belt state. Uh, five plus bell state. We put a Hadamard, a C naught, and then we measure both qubits. And then you essentially type this in. You you load your account. You get the IBM Q provider. You choose what quantum device you want because essentially they have many quantum systems with different number of qubits and different topology, which which you can sort of I don't know. You, you can choose which one you use. Um, and uh, you can uh, yeah you can tell the device which circuit you want to run, and then you monitor the job essentially. You just type this in. I just copy paste it every time. There's, there, uh, I don't memorize this type of stuff. So, so okay. So, you, and then you print your results, plot in a histogram, and you get this. So this is not exactly exciting because we have those two states. And if it was in a perfect entangled, if it was perfectly entangled, you, there's no way you could get a zero one or a one zero because according to, again, this circuit, the qubit A must be in the same state as qubit B. So, um, but you don't get that. And the reason is because they're not perfect devices. Um, look up the word NISC, noisy intermediate scale quantum systems, which just essentially means that, you know, perfect qubits should be sort of perfectly isolated, but they interact with each other. And then, you know, that causes a lot of error, a lot of noise. And, you know, they, uh, it's what's called decoherence. You can, you can check that out or ask any questions, but um, I'm not really an expert in that type of thing. So I wouldn't know. So yeah, finally, I just wanna, I'm not gonna talk about Grover's algorithm. It's a bit too advanced. Emilio will do that day five. Uh, he'll give a more exciting sort of um, example in this one, but I essentially built like a small Grover algorithm implementing uh, function here where essentially you can look at this at your own speed but again, this is too complex for the sake of like day two of quantum computing. So, so what you want to do first is you want to put a, all qubits in a superposition. You apply what's called a, an oracle uh, and then an amplifier. And then you iterate that square root uh, around square root of n times the exact numbers here. Um, and then you essentially get with high probability, I'll, I'll show you the state that you want to search for. Because this is how a quantum computer essentially searches for a state in a list that it, uh, it implements this algorithm. Okay. And the result, as you can see here, is around 0 0.96 of getting 1001. So it's very high probability. And uh, the reason this is exciting is because of this thing right here. A classical computer would take n steps where n is the, the size of the list, whilst here would take square root of n, right? Oh, sorry, not this thing, where is it? Um, it's gotta be a for loop somewhere here. Yeah, so so yeah, essentially takes the square root of n iterations rather than, than n iterations. So so um, it offers speed up essentially. You can do it with um, better on a, on a quantum computer than a classical computer. So yeah, so I guess finally I put sort of put those, those this is where I learned Qiskit from those four videos and, and I th one of them's a tech, one of them's a textbook. It's more like a internet series. But uh, they're pretty good resources. And uh, yeah, I guess, are there any questions? That's pretty much all I prepared.